Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm drawing myself into anime movies. It's been a handful of months since I last drew myself into anime, and many of you have been requesting I do it again. To help me decide what I draw myself into, I made a YouTube short asking for your recommendations, along with taking into consideration the comments on my last video. In my last anime screenshot video, I drew myself into the anime movie Words Bubble Up Like Soda Pop, and many of you wanted to see me do more anime movies, so the first movie I'm drawing myself into is A Whisker Away. When looking for a scene to draw myself into, I decided on this one where Mio and Yuriko are on their way to school. If you've seen these type of videos from me before, you know how this process goes, but I always want to explain it in case there are new people watching. When editing myself into scenes, I like to use a base to help me better stick with the style of the anime instead of veering off into my style too much. For my base, I'm taking Yuriko from a scene that happens just a few seconds before. It's in a similar angle, but it's still slightly different from poses in this screenshot, so I felt like it was a good option. Now I'm sketching over the base to edit it to have my characteristics. Some people get very angry by the fact that I use a base for these edits. They think I'm endorsing tracing or that it's a bad example. And I can kind of see where they're coming from, but I just want to clarify that I don't trace in my actual work or my illustrations that I claim as my own. To me, these anime screenshot edits are just for fun, and I'm very honest and open with my process. I'm not sitting here claiming I did this 100% with no base, and I'm trying to trick people. This is just a silly thing I like to do for fun. So using a base doesn't really feel like a moral quandary. Of course, I don't endorse tracing in my actual work. That's like my illustrations and so on. These are just silly little projects I like to do. Uh, yeah. Anyways, a little bit about A Whisker Away. The synopsis says, Mio Sasaki is a weird second year junior high student who falls in love with her classmate Kento Hinode. Mio tries to make Hinode notice her every day, but all in vain. Nevertheless, while carrying a secret she can tell no one, Mio continues to pursue Hinode. Mio discovers a magic mask that allows her to transform into a cat. However, there is also a probability that she might never become human again if she continues using the mask. Uh, so I'll talk a bit more about the movie in a moment. Uh, back to the art for a second here. Now that my sketch is done, I go in with the line art. As always, I'm using the 4 Effect line pen. I use this brush because it stays the same size and doesn't change with my pen pressure. Anime line art often doesn't have much line variation, so this works very well. Also, the line art is often a off-black color, so I try to keep this in mind. Uh, so the description of the movie says that Mio is weird, and she is definitely odd, <laughs> but I kind of love her. When I was looking for scenes, I kept kind of watching different parts of the movie, and I laughed out loud several times because of some of the weird things that she says. She's very funny, uh, but at times I do feel bad for Hinode for needing to put up with some of her shenanigans. <laughs> Like if a person came up to me wondering if they could record my voice so that they could listen to it before they fall asleep, I would be very weirded out for sure. I also think Mio strikes me even funnier because she has the same English voice actor as Chloe from Pokemon Journeys, and Chloe is pretty reserved and on the more serious side, so it's kind of funny hearing the same voice say some very silly things. Uh, speaking of voice actors, I was surprised at how many miraculous ladybug voice actors make an appearance in this movie. If I remember right, Hawk Moth's voice actor does the creepy cat dude's voice, Marinette's voice actor is Hinode's sister, and Adrian's voice actor is some background character uh, that I don't remember the name of or if they even mention it. Uh, it was really neat hearing them outside of Miraculous Ladybug. Also, I really want to do something related to Miraculous Ladybug, mostly just because I kind of want to rant a bit about the show. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love it, but at the same time, it drives me a little crazy sometimes. But for some reason, I'm still always looking forward to new episodes. I have like a love-hate relationship with Miraculous Ladybug. <laughs> but it is very interesting where they're taking the show. Also, I haven't seen any of the French episodes. I think there's some more released in France. I've only seen what they've released up to in English uh, on Disney Channel in the US. So I haven't seen like all the episodes that are out there, I think. I'm not totally sure. I'm just trying to say please don't spoil anything in the comments because uh, I may not know everything. Uh, anyways, back to what I'm working on. I filled in the base colors, fixed that I forgot to draw myself around the character. I was very bummed when I figured that out. I was like, oh wait, I'm in front of the character and I'm supposed to be behind them. So I had to fix that and uh, now I'm adding the shading. I really like the highlights they add in this movie. They give the lighting a very bright and lively feeling and it was really fun to add. 
Anime movies are often more detailed or the animators get to add more shading and make them all fancy and stuff because they're spending more time on each of the frames uh, compared to most anime shows. Coloring the eyes was technically very easy but after I colored them, I decided I want to change where I was looking, so I had to completely redraw them. With the way my irises were placed before, it felt like I was just staring off into space, and it felt kind of odd. So I tried to move the irises even more that way, so it looks like I'm looking at the characters, instead of just staring off into the distance. I watched A Whisker Away for the first time when I was sick last year. I had nothing else to do, so I binged anime movies. I did really enjoy the movie and found its message to be very interesting. That being said, it's kind of a weird movie. <laughs> Maybe weird isn't the right word. I think it's just the cat dude creeps me out a bit and I don't like him. But overall, it's a really cute movie and I think it's rated like G or PG. So it's kind of a nice one for uh, maybe some younger audiences. Uh, it's on Netflix if you want to watch it. So here's me in A Whisker Away. The style of this movie is very charming and a lot of fun to work with. Like I said, I especially liked the lighting. Next, I'm going to draw myself into the movie bubble. But before we do, I want to thank Tokyo Treat and Sakurako for sponsoring this video. Their goal is to share Japanese culture and invite everyone to experience Japan from the comfort of their own homes through their snack boxes. Tokyo Treat and Sakurako are both monthly Japanese snack subscription boxes, but both offer a different experience. First we have Tokyo Treat. You'll get up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition, and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time. This box's theme is Japan's Best Bites. This box takes inspiration from each season so that you can get a taste of it all with snacks like the Kit Kat Melon, Sangaria Subumi Orange Drink, Mido Style Udon, and so much more. You can learn more about all the snacks you receive as well as allergen information in this really neat booklet. The booklet also contains a ton of really cool facts about Japanese culture. Two of my personal favorite snacks from this box are the Pocky Heartful Blueberry and Pure and Natural Apple Gummy. These Pocky are covered in chocolate that is flavored with juicy Japanese blueberries that were picked in the summer at the peak of ripeness. The flavor is very unique and really good. I love these gummies so much. They are made with freshly harvested Japanese apples and they taste and smell just like apples. They are so good. I ran around my house and made my family try them. <laughs> Next we have Sakurako. If you're looking for an authentic Japanese snack subscription box, this one is for you. Each box comes with 20 traditional and authentic artisan Japanese snacks including Japanese teas and one special Japanese tableware. Sakurako is partnering with local Japanese snack makers to continue to share Japanese culture and traditions that have been passed down for over 100 years. This box shares off an experience of flavors created from all over Japan. Brace against the cold of Hokkaido track through the wilderness of Chiba, and feel the fresh sea breeze of Okinawa. Experience artisan Japanese treats like the Odome Sushi Candy. Don't let its looks fool you, it looks like sushi but it's actually candy and it's really sweet. Vanilla Hime Kagami, Akita Miso Senbai, and so many more. This month's kitchenware is a kanji side dish. There are three different designs and this is the one I got. It's really neat. Two of my favorite snacks from this are the Hitoke Cafe Cream Cake and Hina Arare. These sweet cakes from Osaka are filled with a creamy filling. Their pillowy outside blends really well with the sweet smooth flavors. These Hina Arare are so cute and are a lovely light snack. They are a mixture of sweet and salty and the combination is super good. Don't forget to use my code DRAWMANGA to get $5 off your first box. These boxes are such a fun way to experience Japanese food. Check the links below. Thank you so much again to Tokyo Treat and Sakurako for sponsoring this video and let's get back to drawing. Like I said, I'm drawing myself into the anime movie bubble. I spent so long trying to find a scene to draw myself into, like a really, really long time. I wanted a shot that really showed how pretty the animation in this movie is. I eventually decided on the scene where Uta is doing her magical bubble stuff. I'm using Makoto as my base since I was able to find her in a similar view in another scene. Plus she has glasses so she seemed like a good fit to use as my base. You may have noticed I outlined some of the foreground elements with red. I forgot to do this with the last screenshot and had to fix it like I mentioned. And uh, yeah, I didn't draw around the character. I didn't want to make that mistake again so I made sure to trace where I don't want to draw with red. That way I remember where the boundary is. I was a bit hesitant to place myself in this scene because it seems like Uta is having a personal moment with her powers and stuff. But I imagine I maybe accidentally walked in on this, realized I shouldn't be there after maybe a few seconds, 
and walk away without her noticing. Recently, I keep accidentally scaring my siblings because I guess I move around quietly and they don't hear me, so I startle them on accident. <laughs> so yeah, I felt like I could be there and leave without her really noticing me. Uh, the synopsis for Bubbles says, In an abandoned Tokyo overrun by bubbles and gravitational abnormalities, one gifted young man has a fateful meeting with a mysterious girl. Like I mentioned, the animation of Bubble is really beautiful and the motion scenes are really dynamic. The camera work, the way motion is captured, it's all very mesmerizing. However, it can be a little dizzying at times, but when I was watching Bubble, I was sick and already kind of nauseous, so I may have played a role in this feeling. <laughs> Bubble is a bit on the sadder side. I won't get into spoilers, but it did make me cry. And Uta is really adorable. She acts kind of like a cat at times. <laughs> Hibiki is also a cool character. He's kind of a typical sort of edgy anime boy, but I'm a sucker for those character types. <laughs> the dynamic between him and Uta is really cute. Since I was sick when I watched this back in the summer of last year, I did watch the dubbed version. My eyes were too tired to read subtitles, but the dub work is very nice and I like it. I'm the kind of person that likes dubs if I watch the dub first. However, if I start with subtitles, I have a very hard time watching dubbed versions. Mostly because a lot of times the characters will sound very different and it just doesn't feel right. That or sometimes dubs really change the dialogue. For example, the dialogue in the Haikyuu dub is super different from the sub version. The dub is great for memes. <laughs> uh, but besides that, I don't really watch it. I much prefer the subtitled version. I think it's more true to the characters. I talked earlier about how I didn't want to accidentally draw myself in front of the foreground elements. However, as you see, I drew into the objects a bit. But I did this because I need to erase the edges with a soft brush because the objects didn't have a super hard edge to them. And I could best do this by overdrawing and then erasing softly until I meet the edge. For the shading, I play around with colors until I find a muted blue purple when set to multiply and the right opacity matches up pretty decently with the shading color on Uta. A lot of times I'll just keep selecting different colors to match up with the shading. But because there was a lot of shadow, I wanted to find the right color to apply to all the colors uh, using multiply to make things simpler. This scene especially had a lot of shading because of the lighting. It also has highlights along the left edges of the characters, so I added those as well. I feel like a lot of times when I'm editing myself into things, the shading process is often very simple and doesn't take too long, so it was kind of fun getting to do something a bit more detailed. I also felt like I learned some things, like adding lighter gradients to some areas to make the cell shading feel fancier without too much effort. Here's where I'm erasing some of my characters, so I'm able to be behind the rail and some of the foreground bubbles. By using the softer edge brush, I feel like I was able to make the edge of my art blend in nicely. Also, I think I have a new favorite way to make my art look less crisp and blend in better. I've said in previous videos, I often have a hard time making my art match the same quality of the animation. The animation frame is often a bit more blurred and pixelated compared to the art I draw on top of it because my art isn't getting compressed at all. However, I found that if I size down the art by like 50% and then resize it back to its original size, I end up with art that is a bit pixelated and slightly blurred. I do add a little extra blur, but I feel like this technique results in a more convincing look than just adding the blur because it gets that slight pixelated look. So here's me and Bubble. Like I said, the animation of this movie is so pretty and awesome. It's also available on Netflix if you want to watch it. This last movie has been highly requested and it's one that I really like as well and it's a silent voice. Once again, I searched for a really long time trying to find the scene I wanted to be in. I thought about drawing myself next to Shoko at her sign language class, but I found the scene where she is feeding fish at a bridge and it's really pretty and I love the lighting, so I wanted to do this one. I'm going to take this pose from just a few seconds ago before she turns to use as my base. My plan is to have myself be placed behind Shoko. She turns and notices the people and I'm just focusing on the fish. <laughs> I tried to place myself in a way where we can see a decent amount of me. I don't want to be totally hidden and not seeable, but I still need to keep the perspective in mind. I am on the taller side, so I was able to place myself a bit higher and this helped me get a good placement. I watched a silent voice for the first time several years ago. It made me cry a lot and I really enjoyed it and the characters. I actually got the manga set I think a year or two ago as a Christmas gift. And I really liked the manga, and I'll talk a bit more about it in a bit. To tell you what the movie is about, the synopsis says, A former bully reaches out to the deaf girl he tormented in grade school. 
He feels unworthy of redemption but tries to make things right. So yeah, I find his silent voice to be very interesting because it's about the bully or the bad guy. He tormented this girl but now regrets what he did. He lives with this guilt and wants to make things right. The characters are very well written and uh, yeah, overall it's a very touching story that I like. And like I said, it made me cry a lot when I watched it and also made me cry again when I read the manga. It makes you feel a lot of feelings. <laughs> And the movie is really good, but because it's trying to fit everything into a shorter format, uh, some stuff does get kind of lost. And for that reason, I do kind of prefer the manga. It goes more in depth on some parts of the story than the movie is able to. Um, and having that extra information is really nice. I think another part I find interesting about a silent voice is the characters using sign language. My brother Jacob has autism and when he was a kid he was nonverbal and we would try to teach him sign language so that he could tell us what he wanted. I actually learned a good amount of sign language and I really liked learning it. Uh, but over the years I have forgotten a lot of the signs that I knew, especially since Jacob started to talk and use words more. Uh, the sign language was no longer needed, but I still have a great interest in it for sure. I imagined if I was in the movie, I'd be friends with Shoko and that we met at the sign language class and I'd go with her to feed fish. <laughs> Anyways, back to the drawing. I think this might be the first time I've drawn myself in side view for a screenshot edit. A lot of times I seem to avoid side view and prefer to do three quarter or straight on view since it shows more of me, I suppose. However, it was fun to draw a different view. I did tuck my hair behind my ear since I'm leaning. It would cover my face if I didn't tuck it. It's actually kind of funny that I don't draw my hair in this way more often because my hair is pretty much almost always tucked behind my ears. I hate when it gets into my face. <laughs> the shading this time around felt a bit simpler. It still had a good amount of shading compared to usual, but in comparison to Bubbles scene that I did, it felt a little more tame. I did like the use of subtle gradients. It's amazing what can be achieved by adding them. A Silent Voice is also on Netflix. It is rated PG-13 because of some of the topics it discusses, so it's for a slightly older audience. And uh, like I said, the manga is also very good and goes a bit more in depth, so it's also good to check out if you're interested in the story. Uh, random fact, my family's Netflix blocks anything above PG because we have a lot of younger ones. So I actually had to buy the movie on my Amazon Prime account. <laughs> I'm watching the dubbed version for the first time and the voice actors are really good. I watched it with subtitles the first time, but at this point I don't really remember the voice actors' voices. Uh, so it doesn't feel very weird watching the dubbed version. Uh, and yeah, the voice actors do a really good job. Anyways, here are all the edits I did. Thank you to everyone that gave me suggestions, and I know many of you wanted to see me draw myself into these movies, uh, so I hope you like the result. I had a lot of fun doing this, especially since these are all movies I enjoyed watching. If you have any other suggestions, let me know in the comments. And before we end, I want to say a super big thank you to my amazing YouTube members and Patreon patrons. Your support means so much to me. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!